Hey guys, it's me, Miss Norris. And in honor of Women's History Month, I'd like to share the story of an amazing woman named Amalia Hernandez. In the story, Danza, we learn of the story of Amalia Hernandez and how she put together the Ballet Folklorico in Mexico. And if you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Danza. You can see that skirt swirling around. <clears throat> Amalia Hernandez was born in Mexico City in 1917, and everyone assumed she would grow up to be a school teacher like her mother and her grandmother. Even Ami, as everyone called her, expected that. But one afternoon, while her family was on vacation, Ami saw a pair of dancers in a town square. They stomped and swayed to the live music. The danzas that they performed had been danced by people of that area for generations. Ami was hooked. She made a decision she was going to become a dancer herself. So her life started in 1917 in Mexico City, and she saw some dancers telling the story of in dance that had been told for many generations. Ami twirled in the living room and whirled in the kitchen. Amalia, scolded her father, a stern military man. But her mother encouraged Ami's interest in the arts, and one day her father gave in. He had a studio built in their home and hired the best dance teachers he could find. So at first, her dancing made her father kind of mad because there wasn't a good space for it. But her mom encouraged her. After school, Ami studied ballet with Madame D'Ambre, who had danced with the Paris Opera, and with Professor Zimbin, who had danced with Pavlova's world-renowned Russian ballet. She had some very famous ballet teachers helping her to learn. Ami worked on her technique and made sure she always pointed her feet. She perfected the different structured positions and became an accomplished ballerina. So you see some of this, the steps first, arabesque, fifth, pirouette is when you spin, and grand bat batment. In 1939, two dancers from the United States visited Mexico City where Ami lived. They perform, performed a new style of dance called modern. Amalia was deeply impressed. The movements were expressive and they could be jarring when compared with the delicate movements of ballet. So she saw some modern dancers and it changed the way she wanted to dance, that it was a different type of dance than she had been practicing. <clears throat> Ami met Waldeen, one of the modern dancers, and began to study with her. She also continued practicing ballet. Ami was very talented and disciplined. In time, she became a dance teacher and a choreographer herself. A choreographer is a person who creates dance steps and arranges them together to create new dance pieces. <clears throat> In 1952, after rehearsing for months, Ami and other dancers gave a performance. They presented many different dances, but the one the audience clapped for the most was a piece called Sones de Mich Micho Michoacan. Ami was the choreographer and the dance was similar to the regional danza that she had seen in the town square when she was just a little girl. So she not only danced other people's dances, but was now creating her own. And this one was based on a memory from when she was a child. <clears throat> Ami had an idea. She decided that she would create ballets based on the folklorica danzas from the different regions of Mexico. She was so excited she formed her own company with seven other dancers. Ami began to travel to villages all around the country to learn as much as she could about the area's traditional dances. 
She read about the history of each place and talked with elders. When possible, she participated in the danzas herself. She paid special attention to the steps, the music, and the outfits the people wore. So she said, I don't want to just do the dances from where I live. I want to do the dances from all over my country. After returning home, Ami would go to the dance studio. The, dance, the danzas y bailas she saw in the villages were for ceremonial purposes, like celebrating a patron saint or hoping for a good harvest. Other times, the dances happened so people could have fun and meet new friends. <clears throat> However, the dance pieces Ami was creating were meant to be performances for audiences to watch in a theater. Ami used her skills as a choreographer and her knowledge of both ballet and modern dance to make the, the pieces innovative and beautiful. She made sure the dancers wore dazzling costumes and that there was dramatic lighting and spectacular backdrops. So she just wanted people to see, see this history. <clears throat> Audiences loved the, folklore, the folkloric ballets and Amalia's dance company quickly became very famous. In 1954, they performed on the Función de Gala television show. They danced on the show every week for more than 60 weeks. That's over a year. The company grew to include 20 dancers and then 50. The company's repertoire or stock of dances included ballets based on mestizo bailas, like the Sones Jarachos from Veracruz, from Veracruz, Mestizo is the combination of um, Amer Amerindian, European, and African traditions. In this ballet, musicians dressed in white played the harp and guitars as the dancers stomped on the tarima. So they started being on TV. They started learning new dances from all over the place. And in this particular one, everyone wears white and people stomp their feet. <clears throat> the company's repertoire also included ballets based on indigenous danzas, like Danza del Venado from the Yaqui in the Sonoran Desert, and Los Quetzals from the Noajas and Ton Ton Tontonaco people in the Valley of Mexico. So, also from the Native American, the, the Native tribes of, of Mexico, all these um, ancient dances. Some of the company's ballets were not based on traditional dances, but were original pieces inspired by Mexico's pre Columbian past. Ami wanted to celebrate the history of her country. She looked at the sculptures and art that ancient civilizations like the Aztecs and the Maya had created. She cre conceived dance steps for ballets like La Gran Tenochtitlan based on that art. So some of her dances were based on the Mayans and the Aztecs. And she used their sculptures as inspiration. Some ballets were inspired by more recent history and by music like the polka and the waltz, which were popular with the wealthy in the 19th century. Or by corridos, which were popular with the poor at the beginning of the 20th century. Ami would often dance as Juana Gallo, a fierce female soldier of the as as the as a fierce female soldier of the time. Sometimes her dances were based on the songs that were being danced, and some were based on what was popular at the time, waltzes and polkas. <clears throat> the company became a great success, not only in Mexico, but abroad, too. In 1959, the Mexican government asked it to represent Mexico in the Pan American Games. The games are similar to the Olympics, but only athletes from the Americas compete. 
It was a great honor to be part of such an important event. That year, Ami decided to call the company El Ballet Folklorico de México, Mexico's Folkloric Ballet. The company became truly international in 1961 when it won first prize at the prestigious Festival of Nations in Paris. Famous ballets and important dance troupes from all over the world competed at the event. After the folkloric ballet won, it was invited to tour in Europe. Later, later on, it visited Japan and Australia. The dancers even performed next to the Great Sphinx in Egypt. So they danced across the world, showing, showing everywhere a little piece of Mexico. <clears throat> To be touring the world was exciting for Ami, but it was not simple to arrange. The company needed transportation for 50 or so dancers, musicians, and sound and lighting technicians, and more than three tons of costumes. Ami decided to stop dancing so she could focus on choreographing and directing the company. She was now like a general, much like her military father, supervising all the different people involved in the folkloric ballet and making sure the shows came out perfectly. The company had so many engagements that Ami had to create two groups, one to travel around the world and one to offer performances in Mexico. So she stopped dancing so that she could take care of everything because it was so much to take care of. And now she had two teams, two companies. In 1968, Ami opened a dance school. Her brother, who was an architect, designed the building, which housed studios and classrooms. At the school, students could learn folkloric dance and also ballet and modern dance. Often, the dancers who studied at the school became professionals in Amalia's company. As the years passed, Ami continued teaching and supervising the folkloric ballet's rehearsals. She had become a school teacher after all, like her mother and her grandmother. Maybe not a, a, a teacher like she thought, but definitely a teacher, teaching all these new, new students, young students, to dance. <clears throat> Amalia Hernandez passed away on November 5th, 2000, but her legacy lives on. El Ballet Folklorico de México performs every Wednesday and Saturday at the Palacio de Bellas Artes, the Palace of Fine Arts in Mexico City. They have been doing so without interruption for more than 50 years. The company also continues to tour internationally. Today, there are thousands of Mexican folkloric dance groups, both pro professional and amateur, in Mexico and the United States. Perhaps you've seen one, of, one perform at your school or in your neighborhood for Cinco de Mayo. Maybe you, you've even dressed as a charro and danced El Jarabe Tapito. I know I have. Ami inspired generations of dancers to perform these danzas. She made the folkloric dances of Mexico known around the world and she encouraged people of Mexican origin to feel pride in their roots and in their traditional dances. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the story Danza by Duncan Ton Tonatiwa, Tia, uh, which was written in 2017, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page and don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I'd like to say a big thank you to the Howie family for loaning me a wonderful collection of stories that I can share with you, my YouTube watchers. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.